happy Thursday. So uh, let's start with what's on all of your minds. Well, can we do the same thing that we did yesterday? Uh, do you have any sure. updates on the secretary's um, uh, schedule? I do not. Uh, no. He's in Boston now, uh, but I do not have any updates right. on his schedule. So uh, on, on to Egypt. Are you able today to say anything um, at all about these F-16s that are going to Egypt? Uh, I don't have much for you on that, uh, Matt, but I can say um, that um, given the events of last week, of course, the President has directed relevant departments and agency to, agencies to review our assistance to the government of Egypt. Uh, the Department of State is, of course, abiding by that, as is the Department of uh, Defense. Uh, and beyond that, I would point you to my friends over at the Department of Defense. Well, well, the, well more generally, though, you, your colleague at the White House just said that it, it is still the administration's position, as it was earlier this week and last week as well, that it would be, it would be a mistake and not in U.S. National, national security interest to precipitously halt or suspend that assistance is, going to That is going, correct, and nothing, nothing has changed, but right. obviously we're reviewing all forms of okay. assistance. But the, that can we take that to mean that things that had been previously agreed on to send, to transfer to the Egyptians are going going ahead? Uh, well, again, obviously it hasn't happened to my knowledge, so... Yeah, but, uh, but, but stuff that was in the pipeline is going to continue to flow to Egypt. That's what that means, that... Well, precipitously, you don't want to precipitously end it. Is that am I correct? We're still we're still paying our bills, of course, and all of the uh, the programs are still moving forward. But yeah, okay. again, uh, you know, I'm not going to get ahead of what the right. end result of any Can review you, will be. So, uh, am, I, am I correct in thinking that it is that it's the administration's position that it's all right if it believes it's in U.S. national security interest to continue to send weapons and uh, assistance to Egypt, but yet the administration would disagree that Russia, um, in its national interests, uh, shouldn't, or the, the administration would oppose Russia acting in, in its national interests, sending previously agreed on equipment material to Syria. Well, I certainly wouldn't link the two, Matt, no, and I'm I think they're entirely the different but circumstances. That is correct. I'm correct, though, in thinking that it's okay, do you believe it's okay for you to continue to send previously agreed on material to Egypt, but at the same time you also disagree that it's okay for Russia and its national interest to send previously agreed on stuff to Syria. I just want to make sure I have that distinction. You are there. familiar with our positions, but I would caution anyone to compare I'm not the circumstances. Compare. You're putting them in the same sentence uh, to uh, what is happening in Syria and the uh, actions of the Assad regime. You would agree that not all countries have the same national security interests, correct? Every country right. uh, has okay. different interests, it, of course. And, and in this case, it's okay for you because you say so that it's in your national interest to send the stuff to Egypt, but it is not okay when they say it's in their national interest to continue to supply the Syrians. I just want to. Well, I, I'm not sure I've seen the, the latest explanation from Russia on their reasons for, for continuing to provide aid and assistance to the Syrian regime. You're familiar with our position as mm -hmm. well as our position on Egypt. Can we uh, uh, go to, uh, we'll continue with Egypt. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, the comment that you made uh, at yesterday's briefing, uh, quote, it wasn't a democratic rule, close quote, referring to President Morsi's uh, time in office, has been uh, welcomed by the Egyptian interim government. Um, the foreign ministry spokesman said that it, the comment reflects understanding and realization about the political developments that Egypt is witnessing in recent days as embodying the will of millions of Egyptians who took to the streets. Um, is that a fair uh, reading of what you meant? Well, uh, Arshad, what I meant was uh, that it is about the will of the Egyptian people. It is about their path and their choices and what kind of country uh, the Egyptians want to live in. And you, we have all seen and talked a great deal about the 22 million people who spoke out and had their voices heard. It is not for the United States to, to uh, make an evaluation, um, but um, certainly uh, we all saw the events and, and certainly wouldn't uh, ignore them. But it, is it still your view that you don't regard um, President Morsi's rule as having been uh, democratic? Well, Arshad, I was referring to 
uh, all of the uh, voices that have been, uh, we have heard uh, coming, the millions, I should say, coming from Egypt, um, and how strongly they have voiced uh, their views about uh, his rule. Uh, but beyond that is up for the Egyptian people to determine. But, I mean, one more on this, please. Mm -hmm. um, Go ahead. But you said that it was, it, his rule wasn't democratic, and uh, I wonder what you were thinking of when you said that, since he was, of course, democratically elected. Were you thinking, perhaps, of his effort uh, late last year to um, uh, give much greater decision-making authority to the presidency in the absence of a parliament? Uh, was that undemocratic? Well, or you're were you thinking familiar other because you've certainly covered this building for some time when we have voiced concerns when warranted, um, even as recently as the NGO cases. Um, but, um, and of course, we would stand by those. Um, and I think I said as long ago, which seems long ago, as last week, that it's not just about what happens at the ballot box, it's what happens beyond that. But again, this is all for the Egyptian people to evaluate, all for them to make choices about the path moving forward. Then, last, last one for me, sure. if I may, on this. Um, uh, a spokesman for the Brotherhood said uh, that the remarks uh, showed American hypocrisy, um, and he added, uh, there is no way the Egyptian army would have gone through with this coup if it would not have been sanctioned by the U.S. Can you comment directly on his claim that the United States is being hypocritical and his suggestion that the United States had sanctioned the coup in advance. Well, Arshad, I think we've been very clear, ad, ad nauseum perhaps in, from here, that we have not taken a side, we will not take a side. What we would like to see um, is a continued path to a sustainable democratic uh, process in Egypt. We know that will take time, uh, and we're here uh, to support uh, the move toward that, and that's what we've called for, uh, but I would refute those claims. Sure. I, I mean, it wasn't clear because you you kind of mixed it up a little. Are these these sales were already this kind of purchase and, and sale was already in train before this all happened? So does that mean that it is going through? I just don't have anything more for you. Uh, all of the assistance uh, that is being provided and in train from state from. Uh, from other agencies, the president's asked for a review. But Does that would, include the F-16s? I would point you to the Department of Defense for what their review includes. Well, no, no. I mean, isn't it, wouldn't this come come under kind of sales that were approved by the State Department, though? Well, these are the Department of Defense is the point on, the on this. The Department of Defense is the one that's helping supply them, but certainly. Foreign military sales, or the State Department is involved in. That. I just don't have anything more on this. Specific well, do you issue. think it's a good idea for these for a sale of F-16s to go through right now while you're making a determination whether there's a coup, and everyone seems to think there is, other than the United States, and even Democrats on the Hill are questioning this sale right now. Well, Elise, I think we've said a couple of times, and I know my colleague uh, Jay Carney has also said that obviously we're. Uh, taking a review, uh, a review's underway. We're going to take the time to do that. Uh, in the meantime, obviously, uh, we're continuing to provide assistance and don't see the benefit in changing that. But, I mean, are, just to kind of follow up on Matt's question, mm -hmm. are sales or purchases and deals that were already in train going to go through regardless of your review? It's all being reviewed. I just don't have anything more on this specific case. Could you remind us? Could you remind us of the U.S. position on the governance in Egypt before uh, July 3rd? Do you consider it to be democratic or undemocratic at the time? I'm not. I think we've spoken quite a bit about this, uh, Saeed, no, So I'm not sure I have anything more to add for no, you. Can you remind us of your position, whether it was democratic or was not democratic? Because today, the statement that Ershad was uh, alluding to says that you agree with them that the Morsi government was not democratic. I think I just addressed Arshad's question. I understand, but could you remind us of what was your position before, before the military coup? I don't have anything more. But uh, just what you're, you're saying in your mm -hmm. response, your comment yesterday was that it was not a democratic rule. What was not that wasn't a U.S. assessment. That was your understanding of what these 22 million people in Egypt who were protesting the government. That was their assessment. Is that That's what correct, saying? but we've long also said, no, no, I um, understand, this is but, consistent with what I said, said last week. you said you weren't week. making any assessments, so I just wanted to make sure that, uh, that you're, when, when you said that, you were referring to the complaints of the 
people who are opposed to Morsi. I Not, yes, it wasn't a U.S. assessment that it was undemocratic. Yes, but we've also expressed concerns when warranted about some steps that have been taken. Um, and it's clear from the voices of the Egyptian people that there have been concerns about the rule uh, post uh, the democratic election. So that's what I'm referring okay. to. Okay. Well, th does that mean that the administration has decided that it should uh, agree with or repeat the assessments of minority uh, of minor <laughs> minorities of, po of populations when it comes to making decisions about uh, you know U.S. foreign policy, U.S. Na national security interests? I don't think I'm making a sweeping assessment here. Okay. Every case Just is in this different. Case. No, Matt, there's 22 million people, as we've talked mm -hmm. about quite a bit in here, who mm -hmm. have voiced their concern. Right, right. Uh, that certainly is uh, something that everybody has taken note of. Uh, we have called for an inclusive process moving forward, including all <laughs> parties. That's where our focus is now. On that point, on the inclusive mm -hmm. process. Uh, now, why can't you make a statement uh, that is clear uh, on this point, saying that the Muslim Brotherhood can be part of any future political process, including, I think we including the deposed President Mohammed Morsi. Well, I mean, Saeed, I'm name. sorry if there's been any confusion, but certainly uh, all parties, including the Muslim Brotherhood, would be uh, would be uh, Im important as part of the inclusive process. And, and that would include Mohammed Morsi himself. That is up for the Egyptian people to decide if they no, would but like. But you wouldn't see any problem in Mohammed Morsi himself running for re-election. It's not for us to decide. I understand. It's for the Egyptian are, people would, to decide. That's true, but uh, it is up to the Egyptian people. But you don't see any problem in someone like Mercy running again for president. If the Egyptian people support it, it's their decision yeah. to but, make. But, but, but in Syria, Assad's no good. He, 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 the Syrian people, if they voted for Assad, they could they couldn't have because he's lost his legitimacy. Well, I, right? I think uh, Mr. Assad has killed has been at the helm of killing tens of thousands of people. I understand the but I just said, but when you, what you, what you go around and say constantly that it's not about personalities and it's up for the people of the country to decide, but, you know, in one case you have made a decision that one person is not fit to lead. Just pointing that I out. I think we've talked quite a bit about Syria on here, and we last, may last, do more today. Last Wednesday yes. I, asked, I asked about the formal definition of the administration of a military coup, and you said you're, gonna, you're happy to provide it to us. Do you have any updates on I don't on have that? any. We've talked you about don't? it quite a bit in here, so I would point you to my comments throughout the, the course of the week. And the second question, are mm -hmm. you going to recognize the legitimacy of the new Egyptian government once it's formed? Well, as we've talked about a bit in here as well, uh, this is a part of the process, and we're cautiously optimistic about the steps taken to put in place an interim government. But obviously, a big uh, important factor here is what steps are taken from here. And let me just add one thing I would just like to add, and that is that um, the arrests we've seen, of course, over the past several days targeting specific groups are not in line with the national reconciliation that the interim government and military say they are pursuing. If politicized arrests and detentions continue, it is hard to see how Egypt will move beyond this crisis. Uh, that further emphasizes the point I was making about how all sides uh, sh uh, an inclusive process would include all sides. Sorry if I missed anything, but mm -hmm. in your first answer, did you say that you actually offered that definition and I kind of missed it because I wasn't here? Uh, we've talked quite a bit in here about uh, this entire process. I'd point you to comments I've made over the last No, no, I'm asking, days. did you provide the definition? I think I don't have anything more just for on you. Just like when you talked mm -hmm. about the arbitrary arrest just now, that, that, that's of the, the Muslim brother mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. And it's it's hard for the U.S. to see that if these continue, that this how is it can going be an inclusive process and, how, and, and moving would, forward. And would that affect your review of whether this was a coup or not? Well, I, I think I've said a couple of times in here that we're looking at what happened last week and how things are certainly handled moving forward. Those are all factors in our decision making around our policy as it relates to Egypt. Okay, but not on the coup designation. Well, part of what uh, I, I understand, but it just, it's just just it's unclear to me how it is that events post the removal of Morsi have any effect on what that was, what the removal was. So I just want to I just wanna, you're saying that it was part of the broader review of aid, not just on this coup designation. Sure, how of course, uh, about our policy with Egypt, but uh, it's also about um, efforts by the Egyptian authorities to forge an inclusive and democratic way forward, and that's certainly part of what we're looking at, as well as the legal requirements under the law. Right. 
Uh, Jennifer, mm -hmm. did you see reports about the situation in northern Sinai, like uh, some militants revenging from the, the violence you're, you're they discussing? They killed a Coptic merchant. We uh, did. I did see that. Um, uh, let me just take the opportunity just to say um, that uh, we condemn the violence as we have many times in Egypt, including the horrific sectarian violence in the Sinai that has claimed the lives of two uh, Coptic Christians and in Luxor where four cops were killed and many Coptic owned homes were reportedly destroyed. Let me also be clear that we condemn the recent attack that deliberately targeted security forces in the Sinai. Just back on the arrest, mm -hmm. your comment on the arrest, was that, was that, um, um, that was your, has your concern about this been, uh, been made directly to the Egyptians? Yes. Through? Through it, our conversations with the military and others. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is part of the um, Secretary Hegel's taking the lead on uh, is something that he relayed to the to the Egyptians about the arrest. Or is I, I can't read out for you Secretary Hegel's calls. I can tell you that that Secretary Kerry has been uh, probably made about three dozen calls over the past week uh, about this issue. On, on the point? did he make this point on the arrest, Secretary Kerry? Uh, I, you know, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not clear. Uh, uh, our shot in, and it may have been many who have made this point, uh, but who specifically it came through. Well, recognizing you can't speak for Secretary Hagel or the mm -hmm. Pentagon, do you, who in this building, like, is it Ann Patterson? Who 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 delivered this message to? Who was it delivered to the military? Was it delivered to the interim government, or and who did it? Well, we've been in. Obviously, this message has been conveyed to. Uh, those who have uh, been responsible for the arrests. Um, uh -huh. So uh, that has been conveyed in terms of who it's coming from. I don't have any specifics on that, but uh, clearly high level officials from the U.S. Right. government. I'm, I don't have any more in Egypt. I'd like to change the subject. Yeah. Okay, go ahead, Nicole. Um, I wanted to, um, when you say these concerns are being conveyed to those who have made the arrest, you mean the military? Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, do you. Uh, do you have any update on whether any U.S. official has been in touch with Morsi or has any uh, news about his whereabouts or well-being? I don't. You don't have an update or you I don't have not an update. Been? I don't have an update. Okay. And um, a legal question. So mm -hmm. who does the U.S. recognize now as the representative in Egypt? Well, clearly the interim government is in the process of being created. Uh, as you've seen from calls. Uh, right. that Does that mean you recognize them? It's not about recognizing. Obviously, uh, Secretary Kerry and Secretary Hagel and, uh, and uh, Susan Rice have all been in touch with a range of officials, as you know, and that's what we're working through. Obviously, this is a fluid process, and okay. we're if taking it just, day by day. I just day. love some clarity on the legal side of this. Like okay. Who and, and how that determination was made. If you could um, take that question, the I'd be specific grateful. legal, and let me just make sure I understand specific legal. Who, who does who does the administration see, or what group do does the administration see as the legal representative? Okay, let me let me see if there's a, a legal Egypt answer right for that. Now. Um, yeah. Right now, obviously, it's a very complex situation, as we all know. We'll Thank you. To help you on this issue. Oh, all right. If, if, if the president wanted to speak to someone in Egypt, does he pick up the phone and call Adli Mansour, who is the interim president? Well, uh, I'm not going to read out calls that the president has made. Uh, the White House will do that. But the point I was trying to make, which is getting to your point, is just that um, Secretary Kerry and Secretary Hagel and uh, Susan Rice, they've all been in touch with a range of officials, as you've seen. So if there's a legal specific definition, I'm happy to check on that. But obviously, this is a very complex situation on the ground. Who do they see as the head of state? Well, again, it's a complex situation. They're in touch with a range of officials. If there's a legal definition to provide for all of you, I will happy to check with our legal but team. But is Mr. Adli Mansour the head of state now, from your point again, of view? Again, uh, we, we know he's the interim president. Uh, in terms of the exact definition, I just don't want to define things. But he is things. the president. Do you think he the is interim, the president? The interim. We know yeah. what his title is. It's yeah, okay. in the media every day. Um, <clears throat> and obviously, officials are here in touch with a range of officials there. Do we have any more on yes. Egypt? Okay, go ahead. Uh, Jane, you mentioned that uh, there is arrest of the leaders of the Muslim Brothers, and in the same time that you asked uh, who is in charge in Egypt to be inclusive of these people, mm -hmm. and in the same time, two days ago, you said that embassy or others have some contacts with the leaders of Muslim Brothers. I mm -hmm. mean, I'm trying to connect the dots and understand exactly are still 
contact going on. I mean, like mm -hmm. it's it's not an. I mean, I'm not talking about the position. I'm talking about the reality. Yes. Contacts are going on, and, yeah. and or it's like interrupted because of this arrest, or we and and I mean, because it's as much as I know, at least ten or fifteen of of those leadership, the main people who are either hiding or are or under arrest. Well, that's exactly why I made the point I made. But um, we, I can tell you that we remain in contact with individuals across Egypt's political spectrum. This includes the interim government, military, and members of the Muslim Brotherhood. Uh, in all these conversations, we urge them to engage in the political process and to support the process to full civilian governance through elections. Uh, and that is a process we're watching closely. Syria? Uh, sure. So you will have seen today that the UN uh, is going to send some chemical weapons people to Damascus. Um, Do you have any? Yes, uh, on we that? have seen that, Matt. Certainly, mm -hmm. uh, we strongly agree with the UN that access for its investigating team should proceed without further delay and without any conditions. For the last five months, the Syrian regime has denied the UN the unfettered access it has requested to conduct a credible investigation. If the Syrian government is truly impartial and uh, it would uh, not require these lengthy waits and allow them in, uh, we of course um, s are, uh, support these efforts. We this is these are just conversations as we understand it, mm -hmm. and clearly the uh, important step here is allowing them unfettered access. All right, the, Ru the Russians have taken issue with this comment that you made yesterday, mm -hmm. saying that they are they were blocking it. Are you willing to concede that you might have made an? error in saying that they were blocking in the Security Council? Uh, they were blocking a resolution uh, with language that was uh, similar to what was agreed in on uh, at the G8, which they were certainly a part of. Uh, beyond that debate, so as we know, they've blocked UN Security Council resolutions in the past. And the larger issue here is uh, why everybody wouldn't support unfettered access for the UN team to investigate uh, chemical weapons use okay, so in Syria. You're, you're you're putting on the boxing gloves and ready to take on the uh, Russian ambassador of the UN next time you see him. Right? Well, I was I was uh, reiterating uh, what what I was uh, speaking to, which was uh, a Security Council resolution calling for okay. Syria to provide the UN with access into Syria to investigate any and all okay. credible allegations. And then just one thing, and so you said in your first response that um, uh, the delay is. Pro Troubling, the fact that they wouldn't let them in. You know, they, that they mm -hmm. delayed and postponed. Are you? Is there a concern at all that they might have in this use this delay to try to scrub things down? I don't have any information to to tell well, you is that. Is there a concern that that might be one of the re that that might be a reason that they were not welcoming at the beginning or for well, the Well, I just year? can't. I can't get into their heads. But it seems like I, if I'm there's nothing, if heads, there's just, nothing to hide, there's no reason for them to delay. Okay, but the de but a delay there is a is, is there or maybe there's not a concern. I just want to know is there a concern that they might have used the delay to try and hide something that had? I just don't want to speculate on what the reasons are. Are you welcoming the decision of the Syrian government to to let the UN uh, to to give the UN access? Well, I'm not aware of them giving unfettered access uh, to investigate all of the potential uses of chemical weapons. If that were the case, we certainly would, but that's not the case as of now. Joe, have you had an opportunity to review the report from the Russians about the uh, allegations of rebel use of Not as of gas? yet. Not as of yet. But yes. you still contend that <coughs> it is the U.S. administration's belief that the opposition has no access to, to such weapons? Has not used, right. Would, would mm -hmm. Has not used. Have right. they, do, have they, do they have access to? Uh, not that I'm aware of, but that, that, that they have not used. We don't have any credible or corroborated evidence of so that. So where, where in that inbox, that to-do list, is the Russian report? Is it like at the bottom or below the bottom? Uh, you know, Matt, I don't have a ranking of my inbox for okay. you just today. Maybe change, tomorrow. Uh, change, change and subject. then on, but stay on Russia? Uh, let, on, me, let me do on one. Syria. It is Russia, one yes. One Syria yeah. or, okay. Well, this is Russia. Okay. Um, do you have any comment on the Magnitsky uh, case? As I'm sure, sure you saw, he was... Uh, convicted uh, posthumously today. I do. Uh, we are disappointed by the unprecedented posthumous criminal conviction against Sergei Magnitsky. The trial was a discredit to the efforts of those who continue to seek justice in his case. Despite widely publi publicized credible evidence of criminal conduct resulting in Magnitsky's death, 
The authorities have failed to prosecute those responsible. We continue to call for full accountability for all those responsible for Magnitsky's wrongful death and will continue to support the efforts of those in Russia who seek to hold those individuals accountable. But this conviction doesn't have anything this wasn't a trial of pe the people that might have been responsible for killing him. It was not. That's the point. So, so you think that this is like a sideshow and that it, 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 it That they are posthumously convicting someone yeah. when there are others at large, yes. Okay. Um, and you at the same time are still calling on the Russians to deport Mr. Snowden, yes? Uh, we would. I think our position on Mr. Snowden is very well publicized. Okay. Any idea of where he might be? I do not have any new information for you. Somebody who's in Moscow at Boulder. As far as we know. Can we go back to Syria? Sure. Okay. Uh, on Syria, are you aware of statements made by Jabhat and Nusra that they basically control the regions where oil is being produced? And they have like a, you know, a, a structure much like a ministry that is running the oil and sending it out and getting money for it. And basically, they claim that uh, members of the FSA are joining them by group. Do you have a comment on that? I just haven't seen those, Saeed, so we'll have to take a closer look at them for you and you see that, what they say. Are you concerned that Jabhat al-Nusra may be becoming uh, the strongest among the Israeli rebel groups? Well, I, I think you're familiar with the, sta right. the steps, I should say, that we've right. taken, uh, right. both to uh, designate al-Nusra but also to uh, ensure uh, uh, that weapons are going in, or not that I should, sorry, I should say any aid, is going into the uh, the hands of moderate opposition, but uh, beyond that, I'm not going to give you a ranking. Okay. Finally, they claim that actually your designation of them as a terrorist organization has been good for them because it attracted all the revolutionary Islamist elements among the ranks. Well, I haven't seen those comments, but uh, we stand by the steps we've taken. Uh, Scott? Bangladesh. Sure. U.S. and Canadian retailers have agreed on a safety plan. Unlike the European plan, the U.S. and Canadian plan is not legally binding. So why is that better for Bangladeshi workers? Uh, well, we're still reviewing. As you know, this agreement is between private sector companies. Uh, we're still reviewing uh, that agreement. Uh, broadly speaking, uh, the United States strongly supports coordination between all parties, including buyers, manufacturers, governments, civil society, and labor actors to improve worker safety and labor rights in Bangladesh. Uh, we've also been very focused on this um, over the <coughs> past couple of months and long before in terms of working with all parties to take steps to improve conditions on the ground. The U.S. retailer Walmart uh, was opposed to the European plan because it had unlimited liability. Um, is that a concern of the U.S. government? Is that why you uh, felt it was better for U.S. and Canadian retailers to have a separate deal? Again, it's a, a, a deal done by private sector retailers. We're just taking a closer look at it. Um, and in terms of the legalities, I'm happy to talk with our folks and see if we have more on that to add for you. Yeah, yes, um, please. Uh, go ahead. Uh, a few weeks ago, uh, Syrian descendants were raising the issue that web monitoring devices made in the United States. Syrian? Uh, mm -hmm. Syrian descendants. Mm -hmm. And as, as a matter of fact, it came out two days or three days ago in Washington Post, a story about this that not just Syrian dissidents, I mean, it is these devices made in California mm -hmm. uh, are used by Iran and Sudan and probably Saudi Arabia and Bahrain to monitor the web and accordingly trace people and arrest them or harass them. Do you have anything to say about this? Well, the State Department is closely following reports regarding the use of U.S. technology by repressive regimes, including Iran, Sudan, and Syria, all of which you mentioned that can be used to target human rights activists and dissidents and censor online information. Uh, the United States has controls and restrictions in place regarding exports of these types of U.S. products to Iran, Syria, and Sudan, and we take sanctions violations very seriously and have aggressively pursued enforcement actions where violations have occurred. Uh, in regard to what is happening or if anything will happen, I would refer you to the Department of Commerce and Treasury uh, as they oversee any uh, matter of uh, investigation or enforcement action. On Saudi Arabia? Mm -hmm. There's been a, a report about uh, the discovery of two uh, missile sites in, inside Saudi Arabia, probably aiming at Israel and Iran. Do you have any comments about I that? I don't have anything for you on that. On Iraq? Mm -hmm. Yesterday, a United Nations spokesman uh, warned that Iraq is 
sliding fat into a civil war. Do you have any comment on that? Well, uh, we've spoken pretty consistently about uh, any concerns of violence um, that have happened in Iraq. They've been through a long transition, as we know. Uh, we continue to work with them and work with all parties there. Uh, we urge uh, and consistently urge uh, all leaders to maintain a spirit of reconciliation and unity to overcome uh, the threats uh, that are happening there. And uh, we remain uh, in, in, in close touch with, with all parties. I don't have any specific update for you on it, though. But you do concur that uh, the situation in Iraq has deteriorated markedly since the beginning of June? Well, we've seen, obviously, incidents of violence, which we've uh, raised concerns about as they've come up. Mm -hmm. All right, quiet day today. Do we have one more? Well, I just wanted to okay. get an answer to my question on Bahrain yesterday. Sure, let me give you. Um, well, for any um, question, of course, about the Fifth Fleet, I would send you to my friends over at the Department of Defense. Um, in terms of uh, steps were taken, uh, we've taken, or our view on human rights that is happening, or issues that are happening in Bahrain. Uh, King Hamed showed leadership in initiating the Bahrain Independent Commission of Inquiry for accepting the recommendations put forward in the, in the report and for committing to implement reforms. While the government of Bahrain has taken initial steps to implement recommended reforms put forward, we urge it to continue to implement additional reforms. Uh, that's a uh, case that we're making publicly and privately to them. And if they don't? Well, I don't have any, I don't have any predictions for you on an event that uh, well, we're I guess still I'm working the, on. Well, I mean, look, when we talk about Egypt, we talk about other countries, you have some kind of leverage, you have something over their heads, that, to put it indelicately. Um, in Bahrain, is there anything you, is there anything that you have as leverage? Well, we're continuing to press. You have the presence that? of several thousand soldiers and a lot of ships. There's no thought to using that as any kind of uh, leverage? Well, I know there have been lots of reports, Matt, about this, uh, pri private sector reports, I should say, um, mm -hmm. but not that I'm aware of, but I would point you to the Department of Defense. Mm -hmm. Great. Thanks, everyone.